Hello and welcome to the College Disc Golf National Championships. I'm Pavo Stubstad from Central Coast Disc Golf, joined with John Baker, the TD of this event and Director of College Disc Golf. Thanks for being with me, John. Thank you, Pavo. I'm very grateful to be here. And here we have the round one of the team's event here, John. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the unusual format of this event? Yeah, for our collegiate events, we have a um, unique format where we have four person teams competing together. That's uh, alternating shot team doubles. So the four person team splits into two pairs. Those pairs are assigned even or odd holes. And then after the pair tees off on their assigned hole, the next pair plays the better of the two shots and it's alternating best shot doubles until the hole is completed. And for this round, we have North Carolina State and Emporia State. Let's see a little profile on Emporia. I'm Eric McCabe, I'm the head coach for Emporia State University. The vibe is, is fantastic. The group of guys we have for the D1 team is, it's amazing. They get along so well, the camaraderie between the four of them. They play teams rounds better than anybody I've ever seen. Just the way that they feel like they're firing on all cylinders together, kind of on the same mindset. And uh, it's been great, it's been a great trip out here so far and uh, we're just getting started. Really not trying to jump too far ahead of ourselves and just kind of like enjoy the moment. Our main goal right now is just to enjoy ESU disc golf and we're never gonna have this opportunity again. So enjoy this while we have it. Like everybody to play well in the singles round and not even like well, but just smart and safe and really try to minimize mistakes. You know, if we can just keep ourselves in it during the singles round and you, you can't win it during singles, but you can sure lose it. This is like the first time I've seen these mountains. We woke up and there's fog like throughout this entire valley. And I took a few pictures for sure. Back when I was touring and playing, you know, the, the collegiate scene was there, but it wasn't anything what it is now. You know, over 800 competitors out here, 80 schools or something like that. It's insane. It's pretty amazing. I, we couldn't do this without, you know, Emporia State, City of Emporia, and of course, Dynamic Discs with their backing as well. Well, that was pretty cool to see. I got to wonder if they're the only team out here with a world champ for a coach. Uh, I would think so. We have a couple world champs being represented on our staff and supporting the event, but I'm not aware of any other coaches there, Pablo. Well, that's pretty cool to see Eric McCabe out there coaching the Emporia State team. And here we are on hole one. OB tight behind the basket, downhill shot, not much else to it. Little uh, hazard bunker short right as well. And up first, we've got Alexis Shaparo. Yep, Alexis comes in as our number 21 ranked player. Um, Emporia State has had a very impressive season and Alexis has really led that charge. And that drive was flirting with the OB a little bit, but stayed short of it. That should leave them about a 40 foot putt. We'll see if Cade Kohlmeyer can do a little better. Cade hanging it out wide, trusting that it's going to fade over that hazard bunker. Uh, just a little too much juice on it. That is out of bounds. Looks like they're going to be going with Alexis's drive. And here we have Steven Trainer from North Carolina State going with the forehand. Playing the skip. Boy, it's going to be tough to top that one. And Liam McWhorter. Green light for the ace run. I mean, that's a great shot too, but you don't need it when you have a drop in. Another great shot. Shouldn't be too hard for Zach or Gus to tap that in. <sighs> that was Justin Farrell, just a little bit low. And our last player from Emporia State, Grant Yoder, stepping up. Big wow. putt. What a putt from Grant. That's how you want to start. Some fist bumps from the teammates. They're stoked. Not losing a stroke on the first hole. And an easy tap in for North Carolina.
as we take one more look at Peter Mars's beautiful slow-mo shot here of Grant Yoder. That's probably about a 40-footer, I'd say. Great putt. And that brings us to hole two. Tell me about this hole, John. This is an, a very beautiful par four. You have to carry the creek all the way down um, to get safely into the fairway. And then there's a tricky left to right approach. Um, you see a lot of players, right-handed players, resorting to the forehand here. Um, it's just a straightforward par four. You can either go big off the tee and bite off more and put the river in play, or you can play it safe and leave a little bit more meat on that upshot. And just like hole one, we see the basket really close to that OB line by the river, and you'll notice that is a theme out here at North Cove. Up first, Justin Farrell. Ooh, that's a little low. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I was filming that, I thought there was 0% chance of that ending up safe, but somehow he hit a rock at the right angle and skipped back in the fairway. Grant Yoder up next. That's more of the typical shot you expect to see on this hole, but Justin's shot was actually so good, close to the OB line, farther down the fairway, that I think they're going to end up taking that one. Here's Gus Jones from North Carolina State. And the pair that teed off on hole one has now alternated to the even teams, the even pair, and this pair will tee off on every even hole for the remainder of the round. It is an interesting format. I haven't seen it at any event besides this one. Yeah, we really love it. As you saw in hole one when Emporia hit that putt, it really brings a great energy to the field and also allows eight players to compete on the same tee pad. And here we are looking at the second shots for North Carolina State. Steven Trainer trying to put it close. Uh, maybe a little tentative about that OB Creek. That's what it'll do to you. Get in your head and kind of force you to play a little more left than, than you probably intended. Yeah, it looks like the green light for Liam to really attack it. And he does. Parked it. Great shot. Perfect. Looks like it's going to be an easy birdie on hole two. And here's Cade Kohlmeyer. Little forehand chip shot approach. Leaves it a tiny bit short, but that shouldn't be a problem. And finally, Alexis. See if he can put it a little closer. A tiny bit closer. Looks like both teams are going to have pretty short putts for birdie. Here we go. Great putt. Another birdie for Emporia. Another tap in for NC State. That's two low stress birdies for them to start. Two down through two for both teams. Another look at that putt from Justin. Perfect, right in the heart. Tried to bounce out a little bit, but I wouldn't say anything was wrong with the putt. And here we go, the first kind of woods shot, at least off the tee, on hole three. Yeah, you definitely have to pure this fairway, punch right out the gut, and then you definitely want your disc fading uh, right to left on this hole. Yeah, and the green is actually sloped in such a way that even some good shots can, can pop up and roll away to the right. So you really got to play your angle coming into this green. Yeah, you'll see that a lot on this course. Angle control is going to be crucial. Alexis up first. Oh, that's looking good. Can it get under those branches? Yep. Fading. And I wasn't trying to foreshadow, <laughs> but uh, that's what that slope can do. Great shot. It's going to put him about 40 feet, unfortunately, with that roll. And Cade hits the gap perfectly as well. This is a little lower, a little less hyzer. And that's kind of how you mitigate that roll away. Keep it low. Two great shots on a very challenging hole. And here's Steven. Oh, oh, that's an early release. Oh, he scared a squirrel there. Well, 
Let's see if Liam can get it through the gap. Almost the same exact mistake. That's too bad. They're going to be in trouble over there with either of those lies. Yeah, that's a tough scramble. I'm surprised to see that with the North Carolina boys wow. playing in the woods very often. There's some tight lines in North Carolina. Right? With a, with an Emporia team and a North Carolina team, you wouldn't expect the North Carolina team to mess up on the first wooded shot. Oh, look at that. Very understable disc on a forehand roller line. And it's curling left. It curled a little late, but man, given that lie, I'm impressed by that shot. Me too. You got to give his teammates a chance, and he did that. And here they are. Long look for the par save. Well, that's a little right, but green light to run it now for the next guy. The next guy being Liam. He's got that Nate Sexton disc flip going on. Oh, oh it's tough to be much closer than that, John. Yeah, that was a great bit from Liam. NC State comes in as a highly ranked team. Ooh. Great, great birdie. Great birdie. Oop. Great birdie, less less great disc retrieval. And wow, a tap in bogey in doubles. That hurts. Let's see if they can bounce back from that one. Yeah, that's tough in the team play. Taking a bogey should always be avoided, but what a challenging hole. Cade with that beautiful form, hitting that gap perfectly, flipping that disc up to flat, and getting his team the birdie on that hole. On to hole four, John. Tell me about this one. This is a really special hole. We had a couple ace runs on this last year. Robert Burridge, our defending individual champion. Um, it had some magical wind drops in the air, but it uh, almost cashed it in. But uh, this is a great, great hole uh, for these teams to attack, especially with that backstop. Yeah, this really showcases the beauty of North Cove as well. You got a little bit of everything. You got the, the river and the mountains in the background, the beautiful rocky green, some elevation change off the tee. And uh, wide forehand line there playing for the skip. It's a little deep, but safe. A little bit of a death putt right at the creek. Hey, another, another hole with the creek inside the circle. Justin going for the backhand line. Yeah, you hear a true, you see a true option, fairway option shot on this hole. You can either go straight up the gut or swing it wide uh, left or right. And I think my guess would be Justin was trying to go straight up the gut and he just grip locked it a little because that disc didn't look like it had, you know, any overstability to fade from the right side. I split the trees. Wow, look at that. Parked. Zach threw a great shot there. And two park jobs from North Carolina State bouncing back nicely from that bogey. Emporia looking at a long birdie putt here with OB right behind the pin. Yep, the OB right behind the pin gets in your head. That's what happens. But that's parked, so green light for Cade. He did range find this to make sure it was outside the circle before he putted, and it was about 35 feet, if memory serves. Yeah, There's that Kansas wind putt. Sp spun it right in there. Two big putts and four holes. That's a great start for Emporia State. Yeah, North Carolina thought they might be getting a stroke on this hole, but nope. Not when you can putt like Emporia players. When you can putt an Emporia wind, it's got to feel easier when there's little wind like this. As we take one more look at that beautiful step putt from Cade. Line drive the whole way there. Here we are at the International Disc Golf Center. The course is just shining for the competitors. This place means a lot. It's the type of course that where as soon as you think you haven't figured out, it, it shows its teeth. At a major tournament, there's a different kind of feeling. 
make your career go to the next step, you need to win a major. We show where we came from and hopefully show where we're going with events like this this weekend. And welcome back. We're on to hole five. Catawba River is in play again on this hole. It's a pretty uh, tough drive with a hidden basket. It's nice that they have the beautiful Innova flags out there today. Um, but yeah, it's easy to carry along on this one and find yourself getting wet. I'm noticing a theme here. And Alexis up first. Let's see if they can get five in a row. Doing that wide hyzer play, I like that. It really controls the distance. And there they are, inside the circle. Great shot. You can see why Emporia has been undefeated this season. That one looks a little wider. Oh, but that has a lot of overstability. Oh, we saw our catch cam, Jake Peters there having to dodge it, and it ended up OB. Good thing they're parked with the other drive. Here's Steven Trainer. Man, another foot of height, and that would have been perfect. It was just a little bit too low and hit that last berm. Let's see if Liam can put it a little closer so they don't have to deal with a death putt. Beautiful shot. Incredible. Looks like in all likelihood, we're looking at a couple more birdies here on hole five, and there is one of them. Five for five. What a great start for our number two ranked team. And a birdie for North Carolina as well. They made quick work of that hole. I guess that's to be expected on a 261 foot hole in doubles or quads or whatever you call it. It's kind of doubles gameplay with four players. Yeah, there's definitely a doubles element. Um, we typically call it the team play, but alternating shot doubles, we've had all kinds of names for it over the years. This format has evolved over many, many different versions of uh, this event, and we're confident saying this is the most fun for the players. And here we are on hole six, a bit of a longer par three compared to the ones we've seen so far. 402 feet, pretty open for the entire drive, but once again, as is the theme out here, we've got a basket incredibly close to the OB Creek. Something of note though is that the path on this hole is safe. Great shot from Grant. Looks like he's given his teammate the green light there to really attack this one. But that might be in their range looking at some of their previous putts from this round. It's hard to trust a shot enough to, to have it fade just right towards that creek. What I noticed filming here last year as well is the common miss on this hole is to go 40 or 50 feet to the right just because you know even if you're trying to park it you know that it's safe because you're playing this team's format just the body is a little afraid to commit to a shot that's fading right towards a creek well gus really hung that one wide i think you called that one perfectly pavo Zach doing kind of the same thing, fading. Oh, wow. I was I stand corrected on that. Wow, that had more stability than it looked like off the tee. That's a great shot. Yeah, it was turning over when it came out of his hand, but it definitely fought back nicely. Alexis, no fear. Death putt right at the creek, powers it right in there. Alexis has really played well this season. He's been averaging 980 golf throughout all the collegiate events, and that's brought him up to a strong 21st ranked position. Ooh. Okay. Yep. It happens. It happens to the best of us, Steven. Don't sweat it. Good thing you got a teammate. And 
And two more birdies for our two teams here on hole six. This is a harder one. I'm impressed that both teams got this, to be honest. Yeah, those are two great drives. Another big putt from Emporia. As we take one more look at Alexis putting right at the OB here. No fear. And that brings us to hole seven. Dare I say the signature hole, or at the very least, the signature green of North Cove out here. I absolutely love this green, John. Yes, I love this hole as well. And we've extended it back this year. Um, last year, we saw the players being able to attack it for Eagle. That's gonna be a little bit more challenging this year. And it's gonna put that tricky green into play. And take a look at this, folks, as the drone reaches the green here. Look at that pin placement just tucked into the boulders. I've never seen a green like this on any other disc golf course in my life. I love it. Alexis hitting the gap perfectly, getting over the OB Creek, which I think we neglected to mention in the drone flight. Um, but that creek there that they that they have to cross on the drive or lay up short of if they go in there There is a drop zone short of the bridge And that was headed for the OB but actually kicked off a tree and stayed safe That is high and right can it punch through the trees no it cannot there are a lot of trees there that is OB. And Liam, thinking about the aggressive line, but ultimately decides with his teammate OB, it's better to play it safe, lay up short of the OB, and be aggressive on the second shot. The team still has a chance to birdie if they can be aggressive from there. Probably a smart play. You don't want to have both guys go OB when you're when you're playing this format. Yes, yeah, the first round of the event too. It's definitely better to err on the conservative side. And there's Zach being aggressive on the second shot. It's pretty far to the green from there though, so that's going to give him what about a fifty or sixty footer maybe. Let's see if Gus Jones can put it closer than that. A little low out of his hand. Yeah. You can tell he's got a lot of power, but yeah, that was a little too low. So it looks like they're going to be looking at that edge of circle two-ish putt. And here's the second shots for Emporia. Nice hyzer there from Grant. we we'll put him probably about circle's edge, maybe just inside. Justin with a little stutter step approach to the run up there. They were dealing with some awkward footing. Their, their lie was kind of on that slope next to the path. And that's going to put them close to edge of circle as well. Left to right wind's dropping it. Right. And Steven there mentioned the left to right wind is dropping it, giving his teammate some advice on the putt. Nice putt. Oh my gosh, what a putt from Liam. Every bit of edge of circle two there, I'd say. 60-ish 60, 60 feet. Barely had the height on it. That's a great putt. Huge. And you'll see a lot of strategy in play throughout this event. They're going to go hole by hole and figure out who has great forehands on the even holes, who should be on the odd holes. Nice. Nice putt from Alexis. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting elements that are brought into play like this with this format where, where teams can make decisions on who gets what hole based on strengths and weaknesses. I like that. Yep, and they'll also try to pair, you know, strengths and weaknesses for partners as well. So they'll consider maybe who's a stronger putter, uh, has more power, things like that all go into the decision making when they split up their teams. Wow, look at that putt. He put the whole body into that and watch this go in. Oh my gosh. It's always entertaining to watch putts going in slow motion. 
Especially when they have that much action there, Pavo. That was a good one. And here we are on hole eight. Uh, last year, this did not have those two mandos you see on the edge of your screen now, and most players would just opt for a big spike hyzer around the outside. I love the addition of the mandos here, forcing the gap shot. It's kind of like what you imagine the course designer intended. Oh, it definitely was. Doobie's done a great job designing this course. And Pavo, another theme we're seeing here, there's OB behind the basket here on number eight as well. I actually, I think that I heard one of the players mention that there's no OB behind it this year, and there was in the past. I'm looking at the course map now, and I don't actually see OB marked. The creek is dry, so I, I'm not sure about that. It seems like there should be. There definitely was last year. Yeah, I was, I was not aware that creek was dry, Pavo. Thanks for correcting me there. I mean, I wasn't aware either. I, I only am aware now because I was out there with a the camera and I heard the players talking about how weird it was that it was actually safe behind the basket this year. <laughs> oh, a little bit of an early release there. Let's see if Zach can hit the gap here. Hit the gap just a little low. It's going to be a long putt. Oh, man, close. That was a good bit from Steven. But, yeah, there you see the, the dry creek bed and no, no OB line, so they're actually safe down there. Last year, that would have been OB. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. One one putt a little low, one putt a little high. That's too bad. No birdie for North Carolina on that one. And here's Alexis for birdie. Man, Alexis is such a solid putter. I love watching this kid putt. So much confidence. A great putt. You can see how he won a regional qualifier earlier this year when they punched their bid to D1. And North Carolina cleaning up the par there. And actually, since we mentioned the course designer during the drone flight on this, I should mention to those of you who don't know, these courses here at North Cove, of which there are three on the property, uh, they're all designed by Andrew Duvall, right? The uh, course designer of Winthrop Gold. Yeah, Andrew's done a great job on this course. The first year we were here, they we had two courses in play, Boulders and River Run. And then last year they expanded to a third course, the Longer Gorge. And that one's a bit of has a bit of teeth and we'll see that one in play later this week. That Gorge course, which like John said, we will see, has a lot of Andrew Duvall vibes with kind of USDGC-esque OB lines and, and you know, really punishing holes. <laughs> but uh, back to the boulders course that we're watching now, hole nine, another one of my favorite greens on the property. I love putting the basket up here by the boulders. I'm a big fan of boulders in general. So when a course is called boulders, I'm probably gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, not enough Anheuser there from Alexis or too stable of a disc, one or the other. This hole really shapes for a flex line. There's not really any other line that works that well with that tree in front of the tee pad to the right. And that disc was just a little bit too flippy, I think. He hit the right line off the tee, just a, a more stable disc choice would have gotten him closer. But that's going to be a long putt, pretty safe to run from there as long as you don't hit the basket and roll back down the hill. That's looking good from Liam. Got some fade. Yeah, a little long, but looking back at it. And Steven, just a little too much stability, but actually a pretty favorable roll. That's going to put them in a much better spot than over there to the left. Well, it kept rolling away, but I stand by what I said. <laughs> they have some options to work with for sure. And here we are looking at long putts from Emporia State. And I'll remind you folks, take a look at their scorecard at the bottom of the screen. They are eight for eight. Let's see if they can get all birdies on the front nine here. It's up to Justin. 
Oh, that was so close. I was rooting for him. Man, almost went perfect on the front nine. What a great line. It was just a little high. <laughs> oh, Gus just a tiny bit low. That one looked good, too. Let's see if Zach can do it. Well, that one had the height, but it was a little right. Chain height. And it's looking like a couple of tap-in pars here for both teams in all likelihood. This is a tough hole to birdie. It seems like even with the best drive, you still have to hit a huge putt, unless you're lucky enough to stick up on the hill, but that just seems statistically very unlikely. Yeah, and if you play for that shot, you know, you're taking a big risk because you, instead of hitting in the flat and taking that 30, 40 footer, you could easily roll 50, 60 feet and uh, set yourself up in a tough position. Exactly. We'll take one more look at Steven's drive here. Solid form from the young man. That is going to wrap up our front nine. Emporia State looking good. Eight down through nine. North Carolina with that one bogey and a couple pars. Five down, not too shabby either. It's just tough to keep up with that perfect round of Emporia. And that's going to wrap it up for the front nine. Join us for the back nine. Thanks again for being with me, John. Oh, thanks for having me, Pavo.